We are going to explore in this video a relatively new feature of Moodle called the PDF Annotator. And to do that, I am going to start um, logged in as a teacher on a mocked up page here. And I used one of my topic blocks um, to title this topic Culture Box because um, it is an assignment that my son did this year. And one of the things he had to do with his culture box is he had to identify a culture that he was going to study. In his case, he chose Norway. And he needed to collect and describe artifacts related to that country, the country of origin. So uh, I'm going to pretend that I am his teacher and I am going to ask him to submit a PDF with the descriptions of his artifacts. So I'm going to click on the add button and I'm going to have him digitally submit this assignment. So I click on add after putting my selection button in front of assignment at the top. And I'm going to call this artifact descriptions. And I will say um, upload a PDF with all of your artifacts described. Now, of course, I could put in a lot more detail of what my expectations were for the students, but I'm going to make it short and sweet. I don't use the Moodle calendar, so I'm going to take out the check marks for the grades. And then there's a couple settings that you need to make sure that you put in place. Now, a PDF is a file, and he is going to be submitting or uploading a file. But there are um, options here for any um, any type of file, you know, JPEG, Microsoft Word document, PowerPoint document, whatever. Um, and then there's one specifically for PDFs. And in this case, with the PDF annotator, that is what you want to select. So that's the submission type or the, the, the digital product. All right, then the second thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go back to the feedback. The feedback that you're going to give the students is going to be PDF feedback. That's kind of how you how you enable or activate the PDF annotator. If you wanted to have a box where you can just type in a comment, you can do that as well. I'll leave that in just for now. And then I'm going to click save and return to course or save and display. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to the student view of this. So I'm actually logged in as my son Oliver, and if I refresh this page, you're going to notice that he, as a student, will see this posted assignment. And before I submit on his behalf, I'm going to go into his Google Drive, and because he really did do this assignment, and it is the Norwegian Artifacts, and um, if I'm going to submit this as a PDF, I would have to convert it to a PDF. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to click here. And one of the things you can do in Google Drive is you can download a document. And I want to download it as a PDF. So boop, it's going to get saved to the computer. So now I'm going to hop back to Moodle so that I can turn it in as a PDF. So as Oliver, I would go into the assignment, I click on it, and I read the description of what is expected of me, and I say, okay, I want to add a submission. And probably the easiest thing to do here is to drag and drop, although you can search for it on your computer by clicking on the Add button. I um, can find it in a folder right here. So drag and drop is a, beep, a nice little um, feature here in Moodle. So I'm going to drag it into that box and I'm going to save my changes. All right, so you can see that Oliver has submitted that assignment. And now I'm going to pop back to show you what it would look like for a teacher. So here I am logged in as a teacher. Again, I'm going to have to refresh my page which is command R if you're in any browser. And you will notice that I have a message here that says one assignment is submitted. So I'm gonna go view all the submissions so that I can get my PDF annotator out. So Oliver is in my spreadsheet and I wanna grade that assignment. So I'm gonna click on that icon under the grade column. Remember that I activated a box if I wanted to type in feedback to the students, so that's what that box is there. 
but I also ha can turn on annotating now. So I'm going to click on that hyperlink to give me the option to load the annotator. And there's a number of tools. And one thing I want to let you know is that if you hover over any particular tool, you'll get a pop-up of what that tool is. So if I want to at any time save the annotations that I've started, maybe I have to go cook dinner, happens to me sometimes, yeah, you can click on that button. And if you want the students to be, your, be able to see your annotations, you would click on this at the very end. That's a file that they can click on to view them, and we'll take a peek at that in a moment. Now these three tools right here really are formatting tools for the eight tools on your right over here. So for example, um, this right here is a background color if you're going to add a comment box. So this is the comment box right here. So if I, let's say that he made a spelling error, I can choose a background color, I can click on the comment box, and I can click right on, in the annotator here, and I could say spelling error. And what you'll notice when I get out of my box is that it's highlighted pink because I chose that color here. This is your line color, so you can choose any number of colors for your lines, and that's going to apply to a straight line, your box, or your circle. So for example, if I um, wanted to uh, click on the circle, and I wanted to circle this right here, I could use the comment box, and I could say, I want to hear more about this one and I could put that comment next to um, that circle. And then the, this pull down menu right here is related to the stamp tool. So for example, I could take, and maybe I had asked the students for um, three different types of artifacts and I wanted to put check marks next to um, when the students met that requirement. Well, I would get my stamper here and I could say, okay, I wanted to have something that was clothing, got it there, and I wanted to have something that related to sports or food, and I got it there, and then something that was, um, oh, I can't think of anything, but that, let's say that's the third requirement. So that's the stamp tool. A couple other tools that you need to be aware of. There is a highlighter, so if I click on the highlighter, you can click on any area and highlight some text, and of course you could make a comment next to your highlighter if you would like. There's also this handy dandy um, eraser. So if I select the eraser and click on any comment or highlight or annotation, all of those will go away. And that, however, the eraser does not work for the comment boxes. If you want to remove the comment box, you need to right click or on a Mac, you hold on the control key and click on the comment box. And then you can delete the comment or change the background color of the comment. Now, this is kind of important. You might want to add things to what's called your quick list. So, for example, if I hold down the control key, I click on this and I say I want to add that to my, click, my quick list, then um, later on if you want to add that same comment somewhere else, you don't have to type it in. All you have to do is right click anywhere on your page and you got a quick list here. So one of my quick list items is spelling error. And then if I just wanted to move that around a little bit, you hover until you get the crosshair and you can move it by the word um, or right on top of the word that has been spelled incorrectly. If you ever wanna remove something from your quick list, you can control click anywhere on the page and click on the X and then you'll no longer have that in your quick list. One last thing about these comment boxes is that you can stretch them and make them wider if that works better on your PDF annotator. All right, here are the annotations that I've made on this pap paper. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click that save button, but before you get out of here, oops, I saved, oh, look at me. Okay, I shouldn't have saved it without sending it to the student. So I'm gonna go back in there real quick and I'm gonna press that last tool so that um, this particular student can see all these annotations, and that's this one right here. So generate a response file for the student. 
So now I'm going to pop over and I'm going to refresh my page again and I'm um, in as a student, Oliver Osland, and notice that what he is able to see is to see the annotations from the teacher. So I click on view response and um, notice that he has all these things on his side as well to sort of read the annotations from the teacher. That is the PDF annotator in Moodle.